In this episode, we're going to be doing a custom installation of a Midland GMRS radio system. Then we're going to go outside and test it against our CB radio for distance and clarity. We're also going to test out these handheld units with each other and the one we mount in the Forerunner. Be sure to watch to the end for our comparison because the difference between the GMRS and the CB is amazing. This is Wanderlust Overland. Overland. Get to there. Let me see it. No, get your own. I want to see it. No, get your own. The CB radio has been the radio, pretty much the only affordable automotive radio system for decades. But now we have a much more technologically up-to-date option. This is the radio we decided on. It's becoming extremely popular with off-road and overland enthusiasts. This is what all the cool kids are using but we're going to use it anyways. The thing we like most about this model, much like the CB we use, is the ability to hide the base unit. You see, all the controls are here in this handheld unit, and when we don't need it, it can be unplugged and stowed away. It brings in national weather channels, has 15 watts of power, broadcasts over 15 channels, as well as eight repeater channels. It has a plug for an external speaker, a USB charging port, and is compatible with Midland's FRS walkie-talkie system. To get all the specs and features, we put a link to Midland's website in the video description below. Now we could very easily just mount this base unit up on our dash bracket, or on the console, or in the glove box, under the seat, any place where we have room. Or we don't actually have to mount it at all. See the kit comes with its own power cord, has a inline fuse, you have to have that, and a 12 volt plug. Just plug that into the cigarette lighter. And it comes with this nice little antenna. It has a magnetic base on it. You can just take this, put it out on the roof or on the hood, on the fender, or wherever. Nice long cord to it. Then just take the base unit and you stick it down in a spot in the console like that. Or you could even take it and put it between the console and the seat. And you're good to go. But we decided we wanted to hide this base unit away completely inside underneath the center console with an extension cord that we can plug in our mic remotely. Now it just so happens that there's enough room for our base unit right there. Now we took the bracket that came with the radio and we mounted it right here with some short bolts and some lock nuts on the inside. Now we also cut some holes in our console right here. This is going to accept these plugs. Uh, one is a RJ45 plug that's going to accept our microphone. The other is a USB. There's no sense in letting the USB charging port go to waste, so we're going to extend that out. These are just extension cords that will plug into our base unit on one end and then mount here so we can get to them easy. Into our base unit, we're also going to be plugging in a short extension cord for the speaker. We have an external speaker mounted on the ceiling of the, the Forerunner that we're going to tie into. And this is a short extension cord for the antenna, which this will be tucked up in there and we won't be able to get to this later. So that's the reason for these short extension cords. Now we're going to put links to all the cables and uh, products that we use in this video in the video description below. Now that we have all of our wires under control, we can just take the base unit and slide it into that bracket. Slide it down until it clicks. And there it is. These cables for the USB port and the microphone port are a little longer than what I'd like, but they, they were the shortest ones I could find. So we're going to just tuck the extra up into this little cubby right here. And then we'll be able to plug them in. 
quick recap on the wiring. This is for the microphone. That's the extension cord that goes down here. This is for the USB charger. Extension cord comes out there. Speaker wire going to our external speaker. Power wire, uh, positive and negative, and the cable for the antenna. Now for power, we actually just cut off that 12 volt plug off the end, and we have a circuit running from a fuse and relay underneath our hood down into the console, and that circuit is dedicated for supplying power to our communications and our navigational unit. You can also just run the wires back behind the dash, add in one of these uh, ADA circuits into your factory fuse box with the positive, and then just ground it, put the ground wire underneath a bolt that uh, has a good ground to the body. Now on to the antenna. We wanted to get the maximum amount of range out of our radio system. So we went with this permanently mounted exterior antenna. This is from Midland. It's 32 inches tall and has this spring base. That comes in handy when you're hitting tree limbs. The cable running up to our radio is from Midland 2 and it has a special connector down here and that allows this antenna to mount onto the bracket that we made. With our steel bumper we have a small gap right down here at the corner of the hatch and through that opening we can pass our cable through down to underneath by the frame. Then we ran the cable up against the floor along the frame zip tied up nice and tight. Like most vehicles, our Forerunner has these little rubber plugs in the floor. This one happens to be at the very back of the front seat mounts, and that's where we pass our cable through into the cabin. All right, it looks like everything works, but before we can use it, operating a GMRS radio requires an FCC license. There's no test to take like a ham radio. It's good for 10 years, it covers your whole family, and it costs around $70. We put a link to the FCC's registration website in the video description. Really quick, let's go through the buttons on the handset. On top is the power button and the channel up and down. This side, of course, is the push to talk button, just like the traditional CB. The other side has a neat feature, a plug-in for an earpiece and a lapel mic. It too has a push to talk button, making it almost hands-free. The front is where all the business happens. The menu button gets you to a place where you can customize, but that's much more than we can talk about in this video. Click on the link that we put in the video description. That'll take you to Midland's website where you can get all the details. The call button. Not sure how it works or what it's for. I'll have to look it up in the manual. Volume up and down buttons. Volume is at 90%. <laughs> Can you turn that off? A lock button so that the settings or the channel can't accidentally be changed. This turns on the national weather channels. He's in the lower 30s. South winds 10 to 15 miles an hour with gusts to around 30 miles an hour. This is the monitor button. This will monitor the selected channels and I think it kind of makes sense to keep that on. This is the scan button. It'll scan up and down for active channels and pause when it finds one. Before testing it, we're going into the menu to ensure that our radio is switched to high power transmission mode. All right, I think we're ready to try it out. We met up with our friend Chris from XJP Overland. He also has GMRS and a CB radio. After choosing a channel, we then took off down a nearby highway. The terrain we're on is fairly ideal, relatively flat, but we're definitely out of sight of each other, and we're driving in a straight line so we can record the distance accurately. miles on the CB. Two and a half miles on the GMRS. Transmission acknowledged. Boy, the CB is really sucking at just two and a half miles. As expected, our CB reception gave out after only about two and a half miles. No, we lost them. We're coming up on six miles on the interstate. 10 4, loud and clear. Transmission acknowledged. 10 miles. 10 miles acknowledged. 
the GMRS blew its doors off, receiving and transmitting up to about 10 miles apart. XJP, got a copy? Yeah, 10 you're loud and clear. We're heading home. We don't want to hold you up any longer. Thank you for your service. 10 you guys have a good weekend. Talk to you later. You too. Turns out we forgot the handhelds when we went to meet up with Chris. Mary and I are heading out to test these now. Using the FRS handheld radios inside a vehicle isn't ideal, but for us it's the most common place we'll be using them, so that's where we'll test them. The handheld to handheld signal gave out at three miles, and the handheld to our mobile unit sent and received up to seven miles. All right, so what do you think? I was really impressed by the range of the GMRS radio, and I think the handhelds will really come in handy when, like, say you're out spotting mm -hmm. and I'm back in the car and we want to communicate. Yeah, it's better than just hand signals or trying to shout real loud. Yeah, or yeah, or hiking, or when we're filming. That's and where it really comes in handy. you're up around the corner and I need to drive. Yeah. So I don't have to run down, okay, come on down now, All and right. then run back with the camera. Yeah, yeah. That, that'll come in really handy for that. I was really impressed by, you know, the CB, when it, when it was giving out signal, it just became more and more garbled as we went along. With the GMRS, as we got out of range, it, up until like a quarter of a mile be before we completely lost signal, it was still really nice and crystal clear. It was really yeah. clear. That was impressive. Yes, and throughout the, and far less uh, static, noise with the GMRS than the CB. I'm really impressed. I, my hope is that everybody watching this video will seriously consider going to a GMRS system instead of the CB. That way we can all talk together. Um, we're going to keep our CB in there along with the GMRS for now. Um, hopefully everybody will convert over to the, the new radio because it's far, far superior than the old CBs. And ham, we're not ready to go to the ham radio yet. Um, we really don't see a need for it. Uh, and even fewer people use the ham, in, in my opinion, so. You just don't like to take tests. I don't like to, t I don't want to take that test. I'll probably fail it miserably, so. So if you like this video, we have lots, lots more for you. Um, just subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. 10-4.